All right, guys, we're just going to film a quick little video here over uh, Gavin. Do I need to P pump swap my first gen? Uh, this is not directed at you second gen guys that have a P pump 12 valve because it came like that from the factory. This is not directed at you guys. I'm talking to the first gen guys that are being told they need to P pump swap their truck to make any sort of horsepower. And that's just ridiculous. <laughs> So for starters here, I just want to get this out front and center. A stock max VE pump with the right setup will do 500 horsepower all day. Um, pending you buy the right parts, if you do not, you're going to be you're more around that 420, 430 horsepower. And then as soon as you go and buy a comp pump from like Evan Ratcliffe, or Ratman Performance, or even the Hungry Diesel, um, you can expect to get all the way to the high 700s, just like myself. So you do not need to be P pump swapping something for if you don't want, in my opinion, over a thousand horsepower. No, I think I think the where this caught traction was the P pump became known as this thing that just dumps fuel and you can make a bunch of crazy horsepower with it, um, thanks to a handful of people that do that. And the consensus was, okay, I can buy a a P pump engine. And just take all the stuff off of it and put it on my first gen, and it's going to make 700 horsepower. Yeah, and unfortunately, not all that's, P pumps no, are created that's not equal. The case. There's what four, four different yeah, versions of something a like P7100. And if it's not a 215, it's not, it's <laughs> not worth your time. So yeah. here is our argument with it and why we do not recommend it. Uh, one is the financial aspect. There, there's no reason. Uh, two is the drivability and how much you will enjoy the truck is going to be far more with a ve and that that's not just in my opinion you will enjoy the ve more um you sacrifice absolutely nothing by having um almost 800 horsepower ve truck there's zero downside so with that being said we're gonna get into some of the cost differences here so Gavin, I'm going to P-pump swap my truck. Okay, perfect. That means you want 1,000 horsepower or more. And there's not any point in putting a 160 pump on your truck that will make less than a VE. Um, so we're just going to say you're going to get a, two, a built 215 pump from, uh, let's, let's this, for example, Feral Diesel, one of the most reputable pump builders in the country, maybe one of the best. Um, let's just go his stage four pump is a 215 pump. Uh, 5,000 RPM kit, 035s, max and balance, 550 to 650 cc max to 5,000 RPM. It is impressive. With that being said, if you send in your core pump, which most of the time is not a 215 pump, it's a 160, 175, or 180, um, you're looking at $3,150 right there. Boom. Pump only. Pump only. Um, now, if you do have a 215 pump and you send it in, still $2,750 pump only. Which is more expensive than just the pump from Evan. Yeah. So, and with a swap kit, so, and this is if you buy, if you're getting like new parts, obviously you can like piece something together, but if you're buying nice new stuff, like I would want to do if I was spending all this money on my truck. Yeah. You're going to be well over a grand, probably into the 14 to $1,600 range. Yeah. And that's going to be a, a new timing case, um, a pump gear. If your pump already doesn't, doesn't already have one, um, lines injectors um a lift pump that's capable of 40 50 psi somewhere yeah. in there and um, our this, this 1500 number is very conservative because injectors alone you're looking at 800 to 1000 depending yeah. on where you get them from um oh, you get God. a nice lift pump from air dog or fast <laughs> that can support the at minimum like maintain 60 psi for a pump like that yeah i guess you're looking at another grand a conversion kit for 1400 dollars doesn't really convert no it all it does is get the pump on the truck you're gonna right. spend like 5500 dollars. yeah so will it be badass afterwards probably yeah like if it's done right it will run well and fast yeah and if you di you have it dialed it will run great just a perfect example weston birchfield down in texas that thing is a rowdy sob uh caden Gower up at Firepunk, rowdy as crap. Those are both factory second gen P pump trucks, though. So, with that being said, you're spending about $5,500 there to have everything done right and really make that big power because you're going to need to buy a quality injector. You're going to have to have a nice lift pump. 
you're going to need to have a nice P pump. Like you can't, you can't shortchange yourself there. So all that being said, that's what you're looking at as far as prices go there. So $5,500 compared to what you can buy a comp pump from Evan Ratcliffe at Ratman Performance, you are looking at $2,100 from Evan for a pump that I've done 760 horsepower with uh, on fuel. I've done 1,200.2 on nitrous. Uh, it has all the manners in the world. Yeah. You can you can do a comp pump from Evan, a set of 5x16s from, for sake of argument, Weston at Infinite, <clears throat> and a 6767 or something comparable to that for less than the the P yeah. pump swap. I can set up my whole and you'll truck. Make 650? Yeah. 7 maybe? Yeah, maybe 700 horsepower there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't get with people's arguments of oh well it's harder to make power with a V, it costs more money. No. No, it's really not. You guys are just overcomplicating the crap out of this for some reason. So, Evans pumps $2100, I believe Eric Gilbert at the Hungry Diesel, his is around that same deal. Evan has a much shorter lead time than Eric currently. Um, and then the only other pump to ever make it over 500 horsepower is one of Verlin Martin's pumps. Uh, Verlin's highest pump right now is like 580 and change, uh, which is Zach's. And then that is a 14 mil pump. The 12 mil pumps are in the 560 range, something like that. So if you want 600 plus, uh, in my opinion, you go with Evan. I, I know the differences internally between each pump. And that's why I choose Evan. They're they're the real deal. Uh, I still get oh, not to mention your mileage difference with a P pump versus a VE. My truck sitting out in the driveway that makes that port power still gets twenty one miles a gallon. Your P pump truck will not. I promise you that. So there's tons of upsides to have a VE. There's upsides to have a P pump truck too. I'm not saying that they there isn't a need of some sort, but mm -hmm. no first gen guy ever, in my opinion. I don't care what you're doing, needs a P-pump. If you're going to make 1,200 horsepower, you don't need a P-pump. You just put the nitrous bottle in it, and it's going to end up being safer anyway. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> Me, personally, since I'm <clears throat> unbiased in this yeah. area, if I'm going for north of 1,000 horsepower and I'm dead set on wasting money, not wasting money, but if I'm dead set on spending six, seven grand, Mm -hmm. it's uh, it's gonna have a cp3 on it yeah it's gonna be a common rail <laughs> every day of the week yeah so it's gonna make cool popping and banging noises for you guys on tiktok that are the same guys that think you need a p-pump swap love you not i don't yeah no i cannot stand the tiktok cloud but that is why you do not need to p-pump swap your first gen i see this question tons in the groups and the forums all this stuff and that's why i'm wanting to address it so Again, not targeted to use second gen 12 off guys. It came factory with that. I would not waste the money to swap a VE onto that. That's ridiculous. Just spend the money on a good pump either way, please. Because otherwise you're gonna come complaining to us, asking why your truck doesn't run good, and you're gonna get the same answer you did the first time you asked and you didn't listen. The circle of life. And that's, thank you TJ Fry for that beautiful sweatshirt. Because VPs are also better. But I'll keep that to myself. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to the rant. <laughs>